Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So we're going to go through, um, think about post-stroke dementia um, and post-stroke cognitive impairment. I did a video on uh, post-stroke memory issues and that talked about vascular impairment. So basically post-stroke cognitive impairment or post-stroke dementia is also vascular dementia and we're going to discuss that today. Again, I'm not a doctor. I've only played one on TV. I've worked in mental health. I've been educated in mental health. Um, I do not have the ability to diagnose or give labels to anyone. If anything I'm saying today resonates with you at all, please go approach your general practitioner, your family doctor, your um, cardiologist, neurologist, anyone in your clinical team, and go get the help you need. So the risk of dementia is high among patients that have had an ischemic stroke, um, especially if they have some other form of uh, medical illness and there was some form of cerebral hypoxia, meaning your brain didn't get oxygen uh, or ischemia, right? Vascular dementia is the general term describing problems with reasoning, planning, judgment, memory, and other thought processes uh, caused by brain damage from impaired blood flow to your brain. So I did the video on um, vascular cognitive impairment, meaning after your stroke or any form of neurological injury, brain injury or not. Can you quit that? Can you? No, no, no. Um, you're going to find you may have an impacted ability to think, right? Thank you. So that being said, the reason why your cognitive functions haven't been impaired is due to some form of blood flow issue in your brain, right? So vascular cognitive impairment or vascular dementia after stroke where there's an artery in your brain that is blocked. But stroke is not the only or the sole cause of vascular cognitive impairment or, or vascular dementia. So whether the stroke impacts your thinking, your reasoning, will all depend on the severity of the stroke, uh, the location of the stroke, things such as that, right? So, and if you have other medical factors, other medical situations going on. Now, there are some subtle differences between Alzheimer's and vascular cognitive impairment. Alzheimer's predominantly will impact your memory. You still can make decisions, so to speak, when you have Alzheimer's. But vascular cognitive impairment seems to involve other skills, other abilities such as how quickly your brain acts and reacts, um, how quickly you can handle different tasks, the processing speed, or what's known as executive functioning, the ability to shift from one activity to another, right? And again, I'm not a doctor. I've only played one on TV. So if anything I'm about to say resonates with you, please go seek the help that you need. So there are some risk factors involved. And again, when I did the video on avoiding your second stroke, some of these risk factors are similar. So diabetes, right? You got the diabetes, di diabetes, right? Um, you high blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, all of those increase your risk of vascular dementia. So if you've already had a stroke and you want to work on stroke number two by continuing to smoke and not watch your diet and not maintain, you know, effective eating habits and <clears throat> not watching your cholesterol and not maintaining and monitoring your diabetes, um, guess what? You're not only increasing your incident of having vascular cognitive impairment or vascular dementia, but you're also going to help work on that second stroke, which will then feed the circle of second stroke means increased chance of vascular dementia post-stroke. Now, there's early signs of vascular dementia and there's late signs of vascular dementia. We're going to discuss both. So if you start to see any of the following, right, these are the early signs of vascular dementia. Concentration problems, such as losing interest in what's happening around you. Uh, mood and personality changes, such as irritability and feeling low. Feeling confused. Uh, increasing difficulty with skills, such as reading and driving. So, I know after my stroke, I found reading difficult at times, just because it was a skill that I was very good at before, and I really enjoy reading. I have difficulty now reading at times, um, Sometimes I have to read the same page twice just to make sure I understand and retain it. Uh, but I don't have difficulty in so far as I, I'm 
don't want to read. It's just sometimes I have to read things twice. Driving. I don't have a major difficulty driving. Um, I have driven after my stroke. It's it's not a big thing for me per se, right? Um, difficulty making decisions and planning, for example, trouble completing tasks. So there's something you want to start and for some reason you just can't complete it. Difficulty with daily tasks and activities such as paying with money. So again, we get back to that. I give you a bag of cash and some coin or silver um, and you're unable to make the transactions with paper money. Difficulty with language, for example, becoming less fluent. This is a unique one because what if you have aphasia? <clears throat> what if you have anomia? Um, is now you have to make some determinations. Is your inability to use your language skills more out of frustration because you have difficulty with your language skills? So you're recoiling from the use of them or is it the fact that your language skills are on the decline? Right? So those are some of the early signs of vascular dementia. The condition will progressively get worse. Right? Uh, improving your lifestyle, so quitting smoking, watching your weight, watching your cholesterol, monitor, monitoring the diabetes, um, regular daily activity, that can lessen the progression, but this is going to get worse over time. So the late signs of vascular dementia, um, you become increasingly confused and have disorientation. So places that were once familiar to you, how to get to places. So if you're a avid attendee of your local library, or there's a movie theater you go to, or a bookstore, or a coffee shop, and you know that route religiously because you take that route three, four times a week, or you know, and you're in that place on a fairly regular basis, <clears throat> all of a sudden, just getting to that place becomes difficult. Um, remembering where you are in that place becomes difficult. Um, you know, memory loss and concentration difficulty. So there is some memory disruption after a stroke, but all of a sudden you have the inability to not only create new memory uh, and recall relatively new memory, but your significant long-term memory is impacted. Uh, difficulty with balance and or frequently falling. Well, again, right after your stroke, your balance isn't the greatest. Um, you're going to have some difficulty walking. You might fall a couple times. And again, that'll be normal. So what we're talking about are people that are, you know, they're finishing up what would have been the rehab and, you know, you've gone one or two years post-stroke and all of a sudden you notice you're having balance and you're falling more often. Depression and personality changes. Well, depression comes with a stroke. There are a large, a large population of the post-stroke folk will have post-stroke depression. Um, and there are, there is some personality changes after a stroke. So again, you've got to make that decision. Is this like going back to the language issue? Is this legitimately due to the fact that you've had a stroke or is this something else going on where you need to consult the experts? And the last one, this would be humbling to have this happen. Loss of bladder control, right? You wet yourself. I am so glad that's not happening, right? Vascular dimension symptoms may be most clear cut when they occur suddenly following a stroke, when changing your thinking and reasoning seem clearly linked to a stroke. This condition is some called, sometimes called post-stroke dementia. Um, some, sometimes a characteristic pattern of vascular dementia symptoms follow a series of strokes or mini strokes, also known as TIAs, right? So I, again, I'm going to disagree with that a little bit because right after your stroke, is it really dementia? Right? And, and it's going to be the doctors that are going to have to make that determination because there is a possibility that you're going to have your stroke and then immediately thereafter have dementia. But right after your stroke, you know, your language might be impacted. Mine was. Your balance might be impacted. Mine was. Uh, your ability for memory might be impacted. Mine was. Um, you know, these things have gotten better. So I don't think right after my stroke I had dementia. It would have been the immediate sort of post-stroke trauma brain, whatever you want to call it. Um, so vascular dementia can also occur very gradually. So it may, may occur immediately after a neurological event, be it a brain injury, uh, be it a stroke, um, but it, it's not necessary. So 
there are cases whereby vascular dementia can creep up over time. Now, some of the causes, obviously stroke, right? You've had a stroke, some kind of infarction, right? Uh, vascular dementia will be worse uh, with people that have had a hemorrhagic stroke <clears throat> because there is more damage generally done due to hemorrhagic strokes. But again, that is not a be-all and the end-all, right? And not all strokes will cause vascular dementia. So just because you've had a stroke doesn't mean you're a candidate for vascular dementia. Um, you could have uh, narrowed or cro chronically damaged brain blood vessels. So the blood flow, again, we get back to, excuse me, vascular cognitive impairment. Now, is that caused by your stroke or is that caused by something else? Again, that could be age, that could be diet, it could be high blood pressure, it could be um, uh, a birth defect. Many reasons why that could happen. Now, the risk factors for vascular dementia, increasing in age. The older you get, the more likelihood you're going to get some of these things, vascular dementia being one of them. History of heart attack, strokes, or uh, TIAs, or mini strokes. If you've had a heart attack, or you've had a stroke, you now increase your potentiality of developing dementia, right? And <clears throat> we get back to the big ones that we discussed when we discussed avoiding your second stroke. Again, we get back to high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and the diabetes. So these things are all interrelated. They're all interlinked when you think about it. Just your general health. Quit, your, quit the smoking. If you have diabetes, diabetes or diabetes, right? Um, control it. Take your medications. Um, monitor your blood regularly. Monitor your diet. Obesity. If you happen to be packing a couple extra pounds, not a big deal. Um, if you're packing 30, 40, 50, 60 extra pounds, well, definitely that is going to be something you need to square away. Right? Because being overweight, unfortunately, is a good indicator that you may um, suffer from vascular dementia at some point. But also being overweight can be linked to diabetes, can be linked to high blood pressure and high cholesterol. That is not to say that everyone that is overweight has high cholesterol, or high blood pressure, but there is a good relationship there. Atrial fibrillation means your heart rhythm is not the way it should be. So at that point, you need to see your family doctor, your general practitioner, and possibly they'll refer you to a cardiologist. <clears throat> prevention again we get we come back to the same things we discussed that when we discussed avoiding your second stroke maintain healthy blood pressure keeping your blood pressure within the normal range can both prevent vascular dementia and alzheimer's but also help you avoid that second stroke prevent and control your diabetes so if you're born with diabetes you're type 1 you've got it you can't unring that bell but you can avoid developing type 2 diabetes right? quit smoking so if you smoke, quit. It's that simple. If you are into drinking and drugging, quit. I realize that is more difficult than said, but that's something you're going to need to look at. Get physical exercise. Physical activity should be part of everyone's wellness plan and also help you avoid vascular dementia. Keep your cholesterol in check, right? by eating properly, eating regularly. Avoid the healthy diet of McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, In-N-Out Burger, or whatever the case may be. I realize that this video, you know, it, it, it's pointing out a thing that could happen, right? Do I have vascular dementia? No, I don't think so. No one's ever indicated to me, hey, I think your thinker is completely not right. But again, having had a stroke, there's things you got to know. The, this would be one of those things. There are many things that could happen to you potentially because of your stroke. And this is one of those things that could potentially happen to you. But the great news is if you can do many of the things that I've suggested in this video and in the video about avoiding your second stroke, you now can avoid the potentiality of not only having a stro second stroke, but also having vascular dementia. And if you can recognize the signs and symptoms of vascular dementia, you can then go to your family doctor, general practitioner, neurologist, and have them perform the appropriate tests, determine what needs to happen, and then from that point, get you the help you need. On 
on that note, if you've been liking what you've been watching over the last, <clears throat> coming up on 10 months and about nine days, um, if you like me watching over the past 10 months, please like, share, subscribe, share with a friend, uh, point the channel to anyone that's either had a stroke, going through their own post-stroke journey, or someone supporting someone going through their own post-stroke journey. And if you happen to see in someone either the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who's lost their sense of balance, they... You know, they appear confused, befuddled. Someone is having eye vision problems. They uh, they see in grayscale. They can't see it in one eye. They can only move their eyes in one direction. They can't move their eyes in another direction. They only see out of a little part of the world like that. Um, you end up then with a facial, facial droop. Um, anyone that has, you know, a, a drooping face. And it'll be obvious. In my case, people said they could see the right side of my face drooping with a little bit of drooling. Uh, someone who can't raise their arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Someone who has general body weakness, weakness on one side, can't stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.